What is going on YouTube? Alright, vintage boxing and baseball are my two passions to collect. But uh, aside from collecting all the cards and memorabilia, I'm also a fan of uh, biographies of great fighters and uh, great classic ball players. So what I decided to do tonight was to uh, make a video talking about different books and movies in my collection and then showing off uh, pieces in my collection depicting those fighters um, and ball players so uh, let's get started so the one I'm going to start with is uh, the hurricane starring Denzel Washington which was a great movie which is uh, based on Lazarus and the hurricane and you could even see basis for the hurricane major motion picture now um if you don't know the story of uh reuben hurricane carter you gotta either read the book watch a movie or uh or both because it is truly an amazing story you know reuben hurricane carter was a fighter in the uh, 60s who was wrongly accused of murder and uh was locked up for a very long time and um Basically, I like I said, with these, I, I really don't want to give too much away because I want you to check this stuff out. I don't want to spoil anything, but um, these are two that are a must. So, of course, I had to get myself a boxing glove signed by Reuben Hurricane Carter. So, uh, you know, after seeing the movie, I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to scoop one of these up right away. And especially after reading the book, which was, which was great also. So, uh, yep, this is my piece from Reuben Hurricane Carter. Going back in time a little bit to uh, Gentleman Jim, starring Errol Flynn. So, uh, he depicted Gentleman Jim Corbett, who was a uh, fighter in the late 19th century into the uh, early 20th century. And he was the first and only person to defeat the great John L. Sullivan. Who was John L. Sullivan, you might ask? Well, that's him right there, the Boston Strong Boy. John L. Sullivan was the first gloved heavyweight champion. And he was heavyweight champ from 1882 to 1892 when he was defeated by Jim Corbett, who held the title, I believe, from 1892 to 1897. And here we have them two together. We got a 1901 Ogden's Cigarettes. James J. Corbett. That's pretty cool. And this is uh, my favorite boxing card. This is an 1887 Allen and Ginter, John L. Sullivan. So this card was made while he was heavyweight champion in the world of the world, which is amazing. I just love this card. This really is the holy grail of uh, boxing cards. Next, we have Joe and Max, which is a great movie about... Um, Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling in the two epic fights in 1936 and 1938 and everything going on in the world surrounding them. Um, I've talked to the, about them in other videos, but it truly was a period of time where this fight became so important because it became World War II in the ring before World War II actually happened. So definitely a must-see film. I love this movie. And this is actually pretty cool, this book. This is a uh, the Big Little Book. This is actually kind of a kid's book. But this, was, uh, this book is from 1935, which is really cool. You see how old this book is. So this book was made before he actually became heavyweight champion of the world in 1937. But that... Uh, that that is a fun little book, especially having a, a kid's book <laughs> that's that old. So of course I'll start off with my ticket stub from June twenty second, nineteen thirty eight. Joe Lewis versus Max Schmeling, the second fight that Joe Lewis uh, happened to win, and uh, that was a truly amazing uh, fight taking place in uh, Yankee Stadium in nineteen thirty eight. The whole world was paying attention to this fight. And of course, I have to have both their autographs. So I got uh, this Max Schmeling signed photo. It's like it was signed in 1998. 
and uh, Joe Lewis cut signature. So like I said, this was really a pivotal moment in American history. You know, you got to remember Max Schmeling, who was German in the late 30s, you know, when Hitler was in power. And Joe Lewis, you know, being an American, but being a black man, when being a black man wasn't necessarily the best thing. But you know what? He changed a lot of people's opinion on what an American hero was. Because you know what? When he was fighting Max Schmeling, especially in that second fight, they didn't look at him as a black man. They looked at him as an American, American hero. And that was really a turning point in American history. Ten years before Jackie Robinson, Joe Lewis really made history. And everybody should know this story, The Cinderella Man, about James J. Braddock. Uh, this movie starring Russell Crowe. This was such a good movie. Really such a good movie. Um, Jimmy Braddock was a uh, good contender back in the 20s. And then, oof, then the Depression hit. And... Uh, Basically, him and his family were living in poverty, and uh, he ended up coming back from being as down and out as you could be to becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. Really, truly is an amazing story, and uh, the book is great, too. You know, the movie, you can tell, is a little Hollywood, where you read the book and you're like, ah, oh, that sounds a lot more like what really happened, but truly an amazing story. And here he is, the Cinderella Man himself, Jimmy Braddock. For 1936, Michelin Sons. Gallery of 1935, graded in 8. You know, 1936 card graded in 8 is uh, really, I mean, this is a really beautiful card. I love this. And, um, yeah, so that is my Cinderella Man, Jimmy Braddock. And we got the Manessa Mahler, Jack Dempsey. Um... This movie, I, I think it was, was a made-for-TV movie, but it's, uh, it wasn't a bad movie, to say the least. And uh, this was a good book as well, talking about um, definitely one of the all-time greats. He was heavyweight champion from 1919 to 1926. And, um, you know, Babe Ruth was the leading man in baseball in the 1920s. This guy was the leading man in boxing in the uh, 1920s. And this is my Jack Dempsey signed photo. See, it's a slab by PSA. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite pieces of my collection. Signature of uh, one of the greatest heavyweight champs of all time. And now we have my favorite fighter of all time, the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. See the book, The Rock of His Times, and, uh, of course, the movie to the right. Um, like I said, both well done. They were... Uh, like I said, depicting my favorite fight. He's been my favorite fighter since I was a kid. And I first read about him, first saw footage of him fighting. And especially for the fact that he's Italian. So yeah, he was definitely uh, my favorite, to say the least. And I'll just show up this uh, one particular Ring magazine uh, with Marciano on the cover from November of 51. And uh, I actually have every Ring magazine with Marciano on the cover that was made during his career. So that is uh, pretty cool as well. And everybody knows this movie, Raging Bull with Robert De Niro, depicting Jake LaMotta. So, uh, I mean, this is a classic. I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, it's like, come on. You got you to check this out. This is an all-time classic about uh, the life of Jake LaMotta, who was um, probably Sugar Ray Robinson's uh, greatest opponent in his career but uh yeah this is this movie is just it's classic if you haven't seen it go out and check it out and of course my jake lamada corner pad signed jake lamada bronx bull i mean nothing can fit in the corner of a memorabilia room better than a corner pad and uh what i always enjoyed about this is this is my largest autograph i mean this autograph is huge compared to something that would be on just a regular boxing glove or a photo so yep this is a uh autograph photo of autograph photo autograph corner pad of jake lamada and this was a really good book as well about uh the great larry doby you know the second uh black player in the majors first black player in the american league 
and uh, someone who I personally feel deserves a bigger place in history than he actually has. But this was uh, this was a really good book. I recommend. And up here we have a 1952 Topps Larry Doby card. And I'm sure everybody's seen this one, 42, the Jackie Robinson story. This was such a great movie. They did such a, a perfect job uh, with this movie, depicting uh, everything that happened with Jackie Robinson coming into uh, Major League Baseball with the Dodgers. Um, if for some reason you haven't seen this movie, you've got to check it out. It, it's just an amazing film. I mean, everybody pretty much already knows the story of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier and coming up with the Dodgers, but this movie just really uh, pinpoints it perfectly. And here is my 1955 Golden Stamps Jackie Robinson. So that is a uh, pretty cool piece. And what I like the most about it, it's from 1955, the year they won the World Series. Now we're going back to the 19th century. Slide Kelly Slide. The Wild Life and Times of Mike King Kelly. Uh, Mike King Kelly, who was one of the biggest stars of the 1800s. Um, now this book, I honestly, I, I mean, I thought it was going to be better than it actually was. Most of the stories that they talked about in this book, I already knew. Um, and the rest of it was kind of just talking. It was almost more of a documentary on uh, 19th century baseball than than about King Kelly. But uh, still, I mean, if you don't know much about him, it's good to pick up. If you already know all the funny stories that you heard on, like, the Ken Burns documentary, then uh, you could skip it. <laughs> And here is my 1887 Tobin lithograph, my King Kelly card. See that, the flower of the flock, our own Kelly. I, I love this card, you know, the way it has that cartoon image. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome to have an 1887 uh, my King Kelly card. And quite possibly the greatest hitter of all time, Teddy Ballgame, Ted Williams. Uh, this is a great book say the least, uh, by Lee Montville. Definitely picked this up. Um, it really, i tell you what, Ted Williams was a character, man, to say the least. I, I love the way they, they have him rant and rave in this book. It sounds like me when I get pissed off. But it's, uh, no, it's, it's a really good book, a, a must-read. I'm going to start out with the 1957 Topps Ted Williams. That was my first Ted Williams card. And behind it... We have a 1981 Perez Steel Warren Spawn from Ted Williams Personal Collection. Really cool to have a postcard from Ted Williams Personal Collection. And everybody who knows my channel is going to know what's coming next. Of course, the Ted Williams Personally Owned Wristwatch. You know, I made uh, a whole video about this and then I showed this recently in another video with the uh, letter of provenance and the photo of him wearing it, but I, I love wearing a watch that was once worn by the great Ted Williams. You really can't beat that. And of course, Eight Men Out, the story of the 1919 Chicago Black Sox. And you see uh, John Cusack here, who played uh, Buck Weaver, and Buck Weaver was the only one uh, of the eight men that got thrown out that was completely clean he didn't throw any plays he didn't take any money basically just got kicked out of baseball because he didn't rat his friends out and here is my 1919 to 21 w 514 buck weaver this is such a cool card i mean just thinking about that this was probably produced in 1919 the year of the scandal I remember when I first got this card, the first thing I did was pop that movie in. I wanted to watch that movie while holding this card in my hands. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, I love that, to say the least. That's an awesome card. And here we have uh, two great ones right here. I mean, this book is uh, very well done, this book on Mickey Mantle. Um, it's not a glorification. It doesn't just make Mickey Mantle sound like, you know, the greatest guy in the world, you know, it. It shows his good side, shows his bad side, and everything in between. But uh, that was a really good book I recommend. Now, this movie, 61, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love this movie. Billy Crystal, who directed it, did such an amazing job. 
And uh, of course, this is about the 1961 season. Mantle and Maris going for the uh, home run record. Like I said, it was very well done. And uh, I'd say it's probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. Start off with my 1958 Topps Mickey Mantle All-Star card. And move it over here to my 1958 Roger Maris rookie. And here's my Mickey Mantle single sign ball. And here you can see Roger Maris' signature on my 1961 Yankees team sign ball. 24 signatures on this ball. And the only signature that is a clubhouse is Mantle. But all the rest of these signatures are authentic, especially Roger Maris, who is definitely the most expensive signature uh, to get on that 1961 team. And here are two books you definitely want to read if you want all the info on Cobb. So this uh, on the left is the most famous biography of Ty Cobb, the Al Stump version. And here on the right is a book I got recently. The Georgia Peach, Stumped by the Storyteller. Now, uh, most people agree that most of what we know about Ty Cobb came from this book, the Al Stump version. Now, in this book, it's saying that a lot of what we think we know about Cobb is either exaggerated or not true because it made a better story. And also in this book, it talks about how Al Stump, after Ty Cobb had passed away, um, would buy a lot of items, sell them, saying they were part of Ty Cobb's personal collection, forge Ty Cobb signatures, uh, forge like Ty Cobb's diary, you know, random things like that to, uh, you know, to make, <laughs> to make money. So, uh, who knows who's really telling the truth about the history of Cobb, but, um, like I said, if you want to know everything there is to know, definitely pick these two up. And of course, one of my favorite cards in my collection, the T206 Ty Cobb, red back. Red background for that matter, portrait. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite cards in my collection. And how about the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig? The luckiest man, the life and death of Lou Gehrig. This is definitely, definitely a great book, a great biography. Um on Lou Gehrig, and of course the classic, Pride of the Yankees, starring Gary Cooper. I love this movie. This this movie is just really, truly a classic, and I always love the fact that Babe Ruth played himself in the movie. So these are two uh, that if you don't know, you got to definitely check them out. And here is my 1933 Gowdy, Lou Gehrig. Yeah, that is, uh, that is such a cool piece to have. You know, I was so excited when I first got this card. You know, being a kid, you you know, growing up, man, you always want a Lou Gehrig card. Especially if you're a huge Yankee fan like me. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely a classic. And last but certainly not least, we have the great Babe Ruth. The legend comes to life. Yeah, so this was a really good book. Um, definitely, definitely pick this one up. I don't actually own any Babe Ruth movies because i mean not for nothing i'm still waiting for a really good one to come out but uh if you want to know more about ruth definitely scoop this book up and of course my favorite card in my collection the 1933 gowdy babe ruth number 149 this is just such a classic image it, it truly is and this is a card that as a kid i wanted more than anything you know as any of us kids collecting baseball cards can only dream of owning a Babe Ruth. And then actually growing up and getting one is truly amazing. And this definitely is uh, my most favorite card in my collection. And my most favorite autograph in my collection, of course, is my Babe Ruth signed baseball. I've talked about this ball in a million different videos, but I never get tired of talking about it. Um, you know, I have a later letter from JSA that says this ball was signed between 1931 and 1934 which means it was signed while he was still playing for the Yankees and uh, it's in pretty rough shape but honestly it's the only reason I could afford it and you could see on top it's inscribed to somebody but you really can't make it out 
But you could tell that that is Babe Ruth's signature. And the fact that it's got the old uh, red and blue stitching is something I always thought was awesome. And this was another thing. I mean, how many of us kids grew up watching The Sandlot and thinking, oh, imagine how amazing it would be to own a Babe Ruth? Well, it looks like the Beast got a hold of this one, chewed on it for a little while. But, uh, yeah, this is my most favorite autograph in my collection. All right, YouTube. Well, that's going to be uh, it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, sorry I didn't give too much info on uh, any of the books or movies because basically I didn't want to spoil too much for anybody who did want to read and or watch them. And uh, I also apologize for not giving too much information on each piece of my collection I showed. But if I talked about each one of them in depth, uh, this video would have taken forever. So uh, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this as always and I will see you guys next time.